right? There's there's hundreds of seeds in the uh, in the seeds sp uh, spreadsheet. Here we go. Okay, perfect. Love the bonus Storm of Steel, too, to kind of back it all up. All right, so this seed on PC gives us eight copies of Masterful Stab. It's zero cost until we take damage, at which point it is no longer zero cost. Okay, we're fighting Slime Boss. That should be pretty manageable. And again, I think this is pretty good against the Elites of Act 1. I would like to remove the Bouncing Flask, perhaps. Although we probably want that as a backup. It's not part of the Master Stab build, man. You know? What about the build? <laughs> Got him. Take that, you stinky worm. Really appreciate draw a card as an effect right now with mostly zero cost cards. Or with a lot of unplayable cards if they don't become zero cost. So I will take a Quick Slash pretty happily. We could also maybe think about a Prepared here. I think Quick Slash fits in very nicely. Escape plan way worse than usual. Skewer would be an interesting way to spend our energy too. Removing that flask, perhaps despite, despite my best interests. Gonna be absolutely chunking everything for now. So how do we build a deck behind that? That's gonna be good. That's the question. How do we make this into something that will eventually be very good? Toxic Egg would have been a really good way to make that happen. Unfortunately, this random store showing us several things we'll never have. No ink bottle. No master strategy. No corpse explosion. None of that. How rude. How rude. But now it's time to get some elites. Let's just let this thing go. And we should be able to kill, if I invest one of these potions, we should be able to kill this thing without taking any damage. Because we can do a lot plus more. The Swift Potion ought to be enough damage here. But this this on its own doesn't kill anybody. Nineteen. What if I draw three more? We there. Easy. Get a Guria allowing us to rest. Uh, sorry, allowing us to lift for strength at rest sites, which is a huge, huge find this early. And uh, is going to make these really, really slap. These masterful stabs. Makes a dagger spray a bit more appealing. Could even take the accuracy to have shivs as a backup. Shivs plus strength as the, the late game strategy. But in general, we've got... I'm going to keep skipping for now. Let's just start lifting. Oh. The slapitude is going to be real. Get slapped. Tiny chest. And a riddle with holes. If we lift three times, riddle with holes will be 30 damage. Six damage five times. For two energy. That's not terrible. Not amazing, but definitely not terrible. Yeah, sure. Whatever. I'm in. And hey, a fossilized helix. Prevent the first time you'd lose health each combat. What a relic to find with these masterful stabs. The build is go. The build is go, my friends. We're in it to win it here. Get destroyed. Card draw. Oh, man. Expertise or backflip. Both very appealing. 
expertise in particular, drawing until we have a essentially full hand, I think is better than the backflip. That's cool. Give me that. I've got health to spare. Give me a relic. It's secretly two relics, and with Tiny Chest, we can get that bonus value earlier. So thank you, Tiny Chest. Dead. More card draw or shivs. Hmm. We can wait for upgraded cards to appear. The expertise was particularly valuable. These are okay. Let's skip these. All right, nerds, prepare to be destroyed. Fourteen. Oof. Yes. So this becomes draw six cards, and then we can play the Storm of Steel. Yeah. Beautiful. Blood Vial heals us two per combat. Could take a Predator for additional card draw. I think that's pretty good as well and continues to combo with our attack spam that we're doing. Okay, I'll take one Predator. Going to a shop right now, there's no card I would really want to remove from this deck. So let's not remove anything. Let's not go to the shop at all. Can barely afford a Relic there, after all. Poor Thief. Never stood a chance. Second rule with holes or a calculated gamble, letting us discard our hand to redraw new. Gamble's a pretty potent uh, deck manipulator in general. Honestly, don't mind the second riddle either with the uh, with the Guria. Is there anything we're going to want to gamble? Uh, eventually, these Masterful Stabs, probably. But maybe there's a world where I can just play them against the heart, and it works. It seems challenging. Not going to be taking a Sneko Eye. I'll take a gamble. I'll take a gamble. So here, for example, it's not contributing a whole lot. Although, letting me discard Storm of Steel and Ascender's Bane is actually pretty okay. I'll take it. GG. Okay, well, currently, this is destroying everything. Phantasmal Killer is interesting, allowing us to double the attack power of the next turn. Or we could start farming potions. Last but not least, there's a malaise here, allowing me to sap strength from enemies. Do we want a next turn is, is certainly a question. I Eventually, we're going to have to have one. There will be a next turn. Whether we, whether we like it or not. Question is, will that occur in Act 4 or earlier? I, I imagine we'll have a next turn against the Act 2 boss. Uh, particularly, against, particularly against the champ. It would be nice to have a Phantasmal Killer. Plus it just seems hilarious. Welcome. But maybe could have considered that Thorns Potion to help us with uh, certain stuff. 
but oh man, Wrist Blade, attacks that cost zero, deal four additional damage, making these masterful stabs into even more masterful stabs, um, as well as boosting the damage of any other zero cost attacks such as our shivs, such as our neutralize. That's pretty hilarious. I'm taking it. Otherwise, we could take more energy, but yeah, who needs that? It's like all of them just got upgraded. All of them. And that, my friends, is spicy. Okay, deck does want some upgrades. We need to lift our third time, and then I'd like to upgrade Phantasmal Killer and Expertise. We'll figure it out from there. Now, is there anything I want to remove? Survivor, no. Um, I guess I could just look at relics. Stores have relics. Relics are good. Sure. But I'm definitely looking at uh, rest sites as a, a valuable resource here. We need to need to get our this discounted in particular, this upgraded in particular, and we need that third lift. Would bullet time belong in this deck as insurance? What I really like about what bullet time can do is give massive bonus damage to riddle with holes. Although we did only take one riddle with holes. But if we can make that riddle with holes free, it's going to do 20 more damage. They're here. The birds are here. They are angry. Please, bird. Do not punish me. All right, that went pretty well. A chance at backflip without an upgrade. I'm not exactly sold here. Hey there, Pizza Potamus. Glad you enjoy these runs. They are, it's its a really refreshing change of pace for me to just kind of force some kind of horrible meme build and and have it work, even. Ooh, shiny. Does anyone want a Dart of War in this deck? Hmm. Caldrops? No? Anyone? Maybe make use of the Happy Flower for more energy. We could take a Hand of Greed. We could try to earn additional cash that way with which to buy more relics. Uh, although I imagine we won't land the kill on everything. With the membership card, the Hand of Greed will pay itself off very quickly. Even if we only land it half the time. And I think that's probably what we'd get is about half the time. Because we will just kill on turn one a lot of the time. And we don't want to have to baby a, a, a side quest, right? If we take the Hand Agreed, it's going to cause us to decide not to kill things on turn one, and I think that's a sad time. Oh. Let's take a Happy Flower. A <laughs> little bit more energy. Always a nice way. That makes me more confident taking a, another non-energy relic going into Act 3, for example. Boop. There's an upgraded card. Prepared plus, draws two, and discards two. And I really like that when we have an expertise and a calculated gamble in the deck. I'll take it. Relic for a curse, particularly a curse that shows up on turn one. If the shop was just ahead of us, I would take that deal, since we don't have a good removal, but... We don't. So I won't. Oh, time for our buffer to do work. Here, kill this lady. Shiv does 10. Get him. <gasps> Damage? No, I refuse to accept that. Absolutely not. Not today, sir. 
Reflex. This card is discarded from your hand to draw two. We have a Storm of Steel, we have a Prepared Plus, we have a Calculated Gamble, and we have a Survivor. I kind of like it. I have enough ways to discard that, that I think we can get positive draw out of, out of it most of the time. And it becomes a pretty good upgrade, too. I like it. Yeah, I really like that. There's a world where we would take Reflex, and I think we're in it. And that would then incentivize us to take further discarded stuff. Is this a seated run? Yes, 100%. Just to be very clear. We knew we knew we were going to get eight Masterful Stabs, and we wanted to see how bad it was compared to eight Clashes. So far, it's way better. Poor Clash. I would definitely take a Tools the Trade, oh yeah. Certainly no lie there. Uh-oh. Is this the end, chat? Has it all gone wrong? Has science gone too far? Now they cost actual energy? That's completely unacceptable. pillow, as if I would ever rest. Now, Piercing Whale. That is a very nice block solution for a deck that really can't be taking small hits. Kind of cool. We could also think about an Eviscerate here. One Piercing Whale on its own is not going to get a whole lot done for us. I will pick it up, because we are going to need some kind of defense. Well, one piercing will on its own is not going to solve everything. Okay, we get a uh, a really cool payoff here, by the way. Matrushka says our next two non-boss chests will contain two relics each. And it is primed to give us a treasure chest on the next floor. So we actually get four relics in a row here. White Beast Statue, giving us a potion after every combat. Courier to go with our membership card for a super discount. And... Paper Crane to make weak enemies deal less damage, and the Anchor for 10 block on turn 1. How's that for just two floors? Wow. We've come out through quite a bit stronger here. In particular, that Paper Crane is a huge way to mitigate damage. And really looking forward to two more elites now for even more relics. Oh, plus a shop in which I could buy the Nunchaku, giving me energy for every 10 attacks played. Yeah, that's about it. We heard you like relics, so I put some relics in your relics. Madness to reset the cost of one Masterful Stab? That's kind of a cute idea. Let's just take the Nunchaku energy. Wait, we could have done Madness Riddle with Holes for Wrist Blade. Oh, that's really funny. That would have worked, and it would have been big bonus damage. But would it have been necessary? I'm not sure. Oh, beautiful. Double damage next turn with bonus draw. How could I say no? Twenty-eight. Blech. All right. Well, that went pretty well. We get the boot, which actually does not make Riddle with Holes do any more damage. Liquid Memories sure does, though, and some big decisions here. Terror is vulnerable, making all these attacks do even more damage, or an after image to give us block whenever we play a card, which could help a bit, too. That could help a lot when it comes to putting together a late-game block strategy. But 
man, Terror is mighty strong here. And particularly when it comes to beating Champ, Terror is going to be our easy solution. I think I'll be taking this Terror. But we will, we will start taking after images as we see them. I just think the Terror ends up being slightly more important. Sucker Punch Plus is worth considering just because of Paper Crane. Could also end up taking the Deflect card here. Free block is nothing to sneeze at. for a leg sweep or something, but I probably shouldn't turn down the weaken that we're being offered. Especially with our three points of strength. An attack that applies weak, that's really good. I think Sucker Punch is a, an often underrated card, and with Paper Crane, it's very good. Double damage and bonus draw this turn. Equals death. Bonk. Now we're talking. Centennial Puzzle. If we do lose health, draw three cards so we can draw all of our very expensive... Damn it. Um, masterful stabs. I could have taken the after image. Come on. Come on. That's just sad. Oh well. Uh, many things I'd like to upgrade. First and foremost is this expertise, I believe. But the weaken upgrades are also pretty important. Any kind of upgrade all would be pretty valuable for this deck, too. The spicy turn one. It's only one block card. It does block for eight, though. But I could not find it. So we have to kill Champ quickly before we get hit again. He's hitting me again. For 16, though. I could actually. Oh, yeah, no, I can't. Even with the frail, I can't. Two turns of being double damage. Good news is the champ is already almost dead before striking us even this one time. So now with double damage, well, I think things will be okay. 18 times 5. No prob. Grand Finale, Wraith Form, and Alchemize. Wraith Form is certainly a way to kind of stay alive. Wraith Form reduces damage to 1 which is still enough to make Masterful Stab cost more. But it's definitely a step in the right direction. Grand Finale does 54 damage with the Wrist Blade. I think I will take this Wraith Form. We'll take that fairy with us, too. Pyramid. 
<laughs> what a set of options here. So our only energy choice is the Velvet Choker, which makes me really happy about Happy Flower. Velvet Choker limits us to six cards per turn, making at a minimum Storm of Steel not so useful. Root of Pyramid lets us retain our hand full of expensive Masterful Stabs. It would be pretty good with the Wraith form. Actually, Pyramid's definitely not a bad card here when it comes to tackling the late game. Or we can simply get more Relics by virtue of the Black Star, and that sounds pretty dang fun to me. More Relics. I'm in for more Relics. Let's go. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Okay, we have to fight the Burning Elite, but I can fight Two elites on the way there. Easy. And we can dip into a couple of shops to look for, you guessed it, more relics. Maybe even get 999 gold if our timing is spectacular here. Oof, this reflex. Spiker is also a slight problem, huh? Well, maybe not. I can just Masterful Stab one time for 57 damage. I don't think we need an all-out attack. We'd rather have a Dagger Spray anyway. Alright. 999 gold? 999 gold! Easy every time. So for the low, low price of two Normality Curses, I can get 999 gold with Membership Card plus Courier. Effectively, more than 2,000 gold, 2,500 gold worth of purchasing power. And I can spend all of it because we have the Courier. We can remove one Normality instantly here at the shop, and we can remove the other one here. Easy deal. Very easy deal. This is ultimately... Like, 10 relics worth of, of money. What do you do? Can it really be this easy? Where's the Burning Elite? The Burning Elite is here. And we can reach them along this path. A beautiful store. I feel like I can get in a candy shop. Oh yeah, there's a lot of nice things in this stop in this shop too. Look at that, 73 gold for a colorless rare card, 106 for a boat thingy. Those are ridiculous prices. First and foremost, minus one normality. I think I'll take the sling of courage for more strength in elites. That just sounds fun. I'll take a boat thingy for block on turn two. Ombomori, that's cute. Do I upgrade two random attacks with the whetstone? Honestly, yes. Mostly I'd like to hit the sucker punch or the neutralize. Get masterful stab and riddle with holes. That's okay. Extra rewards from enemies with a prayer wheel. That is... Eh. Flash of Steel is okay here. Pick that up. Deal three, draw a card. Actually, it's way more than deal three, because we have Wrist Blade and three strength. It's actually deal ten, draw one card. Wow. I don't think there's a whole lot here that I want other than this. Maybe a second gamble. Particularly with, these re with this Reflex. I'll take one more gamble. And from here, it does feel like I want to go to the next store. There's not a whole lot of particular value now. 
We're not taking enough regular fights for the prayer wheel to feel worth it, although the fail prayer wheel could be a good pickup here. Well laid plans to let us hold on to a card could also be pretty good. Hold on to uh, Piercing Whale or Wraith Worm. We're not getting a pyramid. We, we refuse the pyramid, in fact. And it's on sale? Sure. How about an Infinite Blades? Less convinced. Not bad, per se. They do deal 10 damage each. Just like the Flash of Steel did, but... I think a Blade Dance or something. Do I want more events? Yes. Let's upgrade a card. This one. And one more event. It's a chest. With Orichalcum in it. Orichalcum does help with the Wraith Form. Guaranteed block every turn. In a deck that's currently not providing much of any block. Uh, we don't have to take the blue key because there is one more chest coming up. I'll take the Orichalcum. Let's grab our recall now. And let's fight ourselves a Reptomancer. Phantasmal, Predator, and Terror all lining up here. Making for one really big turn. With normality in it. But I can discard the normality with the prepared, and then it's like it never happened at all. And guess what? Riddle with Holes does 27 times 5. Get destroyed, lady. Now we have a Gremlin Horn giving us a card draw and an energy whenever somebody dies. Molten Egg to make sure the next Riddle with Holes we see is upgraded. Another prepared here. Or another Quick Slash. Both pretty good. Actually, take the quick slash. A little bit more guaranteed damage for the heart fight. And we reach the second store. Able to remove our second normality now and buy the almighty hand drill. I definitely want another masterful stab, just, just for the value. Just for, just for old time's sake. Maybe we can make it a full 10 by the end of the run. I'm gonna buy seven max health, and I'm gonna buy the cow. Making our first attack do more damage. We'll buy the scales too. And there's the reason to have bought the prayer wheel. Singing bowl lets us skip cards to gain max HP. That's worth considering as well. We could easily get 10 hit points out of that by the end of the run. So it's worth thinking about. Something worth noting is that um, with the courier, normally in shops, there's always one shop relic in the rightmost relic slot. Um, but when you purchase the, the shop specific relic, it is not replenished with another shop relic. In fact, none of the piles will replenish with a new shop relic. You'll only be able to see new common, uncommon, or rare relics. So we can't do digging for any specific shop relic, be it the mirror, the prismatic shard, or anything else. I know, we did not buy the prayer wheel. I'm wishing that I did, but we didn't. Could take an acrobatics here. Although I think with the second prepared... Oh no, I didn't take the second prepared. Okay, I'll take an acrobatics then. And I guess I will take the singing bowl. Not going to take the strike dummy, not going to take the hourglass, not going to take the hand drill. I could consider a blade dance. I don't think there's anything this hand drill is going to work on. Any enemy that is going to gain block is going to be dead before they are able to do so. Probably. That's how I'm feeling there. Alright, time to get our blue key here over the Eternal Feather. 
that ended up being a pretty good exchange. And we'll go two more elites. Skipping out on one last fire here. More relics, more better, as they say. I've got boot for you, Nemesis, although are we even going to reach turn two? That's the question. Yes. Fair enough. Every relic is a Mercury Hourglass. Oh, that was a fun, fun way to play. Just the animation time would be hilarious by the end of it. Dear Boat Thingy, thanks. Preserved Insect to make the remaining elites small. Pen Nib to make our attacks double. And a Tactician to discard, or an upgraded Dida Die for some AoE, or honestly, just two max health. The two max health. Now we can line up the Pen Nib, Phantasmal Killer, Akabeko Riddle with Holes that we're all dreaming of. Fifteen damage flash of steel. The power. Second acrobatics. Nay, just more help. Can we kill Transient? Now that's the real test. Finally a challenge. Two hundred damage on turn one. Seems to be a pretty good start. Now we'll be able to get the Phantasmal Killer in play. And we have Pendant ready. Come on. Nice. Play this just to avoid drawing it. Double damage is here. Forty two times five. The power. The sheer power. Boom! Two turns to spare, even. Absolutely destroyed. The pen nib is synced with the nunchaku, so I don't have to see the pen nib in order to use it. Brilliant. CC Priest, thank you so much for 16 months of support. Do we take another upgraded predator just for more draw? I think we do. Really think that we do. So far, very, very few enemies have managed to damage me. This has been a shockingly perfect run, but is that going to come to a crashing halt at our Act 3 boss? That's my question. That's my question. The scroll bar, my god. The power. Get ourselves a mummified hand. Whenever we play a power card, random card in hand is free. We've got at least two powers. And, notably, mummified hand can make riddle with holes zero cost for even more damage. A lizard tail could definitely help us survive the heart fight. But at what cost? 
And an upgraded Cloakenegger adds two shivs to my hand. Or a malaise to sap strength off our foes. Believe it or not, Prankster, we're many, 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 many relics away from need, need, uh, from being able to find a circlet. Um, we're closing in on one and a half bars of relics. I think you need about three or four full bars to uh, to hope to see a circlet. It's a lot of relics. It's twenty five relics that fit on one page. So we currently have thirty two relics. A circlet is the relic that the Spire gives you when you cannot get any other relics. So if you found every relic and you find another relic, it's a circlet. I think I'll take a malaise here. Malaise is really going to help against these end bosses. Take a combat or do I take an event? I could find double orb walkers. Look at the event here. Tesseract, that's even better. There's lots of really good colorless cards. We can take an upgraded Flash of Steel. That does 13 damage. And we can take Max Health, too. Ooh, and a Dark Shackles. Or a Secret Technique. She would like both of these quite a lot. I'm gonna take the Dark Shackles, so we have another multi-attack stopper. Two Max Health and a Flash of Steel. Fear. All right, this is either upgrade malaise, upgrade one of the gambles, or upgrade the reflex, I think. I'm not going to upgrade the well-laid plans. Upgrade one of the gambles. So that I can use it multiple times. And now we must face the Awakened One. This could be a bit of a challenge for us. Our first actual boss... We don't exactly have a long-term block plan, and if we start taking damage, the Masterful Stabs are going to start costing us money. Well, not money. Uh, lots of energy. And that's a challenge. That's a real challenge to overcome. Good luck to us. Oh. Shackles this turn. I'll think about it. We need to draw weak and reduce strength to block this turn. I'm not using this calculated gamble if I'm holding on to the wraith form. Aha! Perfect. So I can go well aid plans. Dark shackles, malaise. And then we get to keep our buffer. Phantasmal Killer. Next attack is pendant. Wait, oh, Predator was free. I completely forgot about my mummified hand. Like, what do you mean Predator was free? Yes, Predator was free, and I failed to play it. I forgot I had a mummified hand, and I did not notice that it became zero cost. Whoops. So sue me. In my defense, it's not on the relic bar that I can see. This time I'm not playing it, because I can't play it without a valid target. Alright. 
continuously scrolling relic bar. Can I just have it like a news ticker? That sounds pretty fun. Still have my buffer. Boom. Incredible. I did not think we were going to get get all the way through the Awaken One fight without losing buffer. That's cool. That's cool. Next up, Sluggo. Sluggoo. The Sluganator. Will we be destroyed by Sluggo? That is the question. For our crimes. The answer is maybe. The answer is definitely maybe. Let's keep the Dark Shackles, then. Because we can reduce this attack value enormously here. I think I'm going to try to kill Time Eater... by skipping Phase 2. It's playing Terror here. Dark Shackles brings that down to a 1x3 already. Okay. Um, and then just holding Wraith for him, playing no further cards. So this hit we buffer. And if I can get a kill next turn, that'd be great. I'm sure I have enough cards to kill, though. E7. Oh, actually, Pendum's ready, right? So we go Masterful Stab, and then this is 42 times 5. Easy. The damage output is just so high that our relative lack of block really isn't of consequence here. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this masterful stabbing? And is this going to work on the heart at all. That is the question. We have no after images. Need I remind us? Not one. I'm upgrading either Reflex or Malaise here, I think. I don't feel like the, uh, the Well Laid Plans needs the upgrade. Just buy all the powers. That's right, we can buy the entire power stack from the shop. We can buy unlimited powers. Infinite powers. Got a lot of cash here. Do I shell out for accuracy? Maybe. Do I shell out for chemical X? Probably. Magnetism is a power, technically. I actually don't mind that against heart at all. Genuinely. Finisher seems pretty hilarious, too. Two random skill upgrades look like. This, 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 this. Actually, very good on average. We might get plus draw. We might get cost reduction. We might get a block upgrade. War paint seems good. Calendar is definitely. Uh, Gonna show up late to the party, let's say. Is there anything to remove? 
excluding masterful stabs, of course. All right, let's see what's behind the war paint. We did get terror and gamble upgraded. Is that a kunai? You better believe it is. Of course, I don't exactly have a lot of block cards, but we could add some here. There's a dash, there's a deflect. Let's see what's behind Chemical X. Tungsten Rod! Whenever you would lose health, lose one... Fewer? Lose one less. That won't stop Beat of Death completely, because the Beat of Death is two here on Ascension 20, but that will help. So I'll take it. Healing from potions, that's okay. I think I will take the Kunai. And the Ornamental Fan. Okay, now we're now we're in business. Kunai alone, not that great. Kunai and Ornamental Fan together should help a lot. One dex and four block for every three attacks played. To that end, let's pick up the dash. I'm also going to take... Cloak and Dagger, Deflect, and Sucker Punch Plus. I can get a 38 card deck with a whole bunch of Masterful Stabs, a whole bunch of whatever added to it, and 40 Relics. Let's see how it goes. Don't forget, I have even more strength in this fight, too. So Flash of Steel does 20 damage. Easy. Easy 20 damage every time. Oh, well that's a nice draw. All right. I'll take it. Fifty, by the way. Actually, it doesn't even matter that I'm intangible this turn, because they're both dead. Alright, good talk. Get even more strength. The Vajra gives us two points of strength, and the Bird-Faced Urn will heal us whenever I play a power. Lastly, but not leastly, there's a Duplication Potion here. All we have to do is Dupe Pot Wraith Form with Tungsten Rod, and we are there. That's all it's gonna have to be. Give me more Max Alt, then. No fairies today. Oh, and I had Pen of Akabeko lined up on turn one. Even better. Even better. All right, Heart versus me. Turn one. Fight. Wait. These do more damage. Your move, heart. Big hit first is really good for us. Gotta watch the beat of death, though. There's Wraith Form, but I can't hold it, but that's actually fine. Because the Liquid Memories is here, too. So we're in business now. So, what we do is Liquid Memories the Wraith Form. Makes it now zero cost. I can duplicate it. Because of Tungsten Rod, I cannot take damage while intangible. It means it's time to lay into this nerd. Poor Centennial Puzzle will have to wait for another day.
The perfect fight. Said it couldn't be done. They were wrong. Because it could be. And I did. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.